Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. My name is Michael Sullivan and I'm the business administrator here at FaithBridge. I'm joined by Pastor Ken who just gave a great sermon to kick off our Unshakable series. Uh, we're gonna jump into a lot of questions. Thanks for being here with us, Pastor Ken. Uh, the first question is actually one that you mentioned in your sermon uh, that you would address. And the question uh, really comes to that you had mentioned uh, that all the captives would be castrated but the prophet said that God wanted them to multiply. So how do we <laughs> that would be hold hard. that in balance? Right. So let me restate what I meant to s state, uh, because I think in one of the hours I did sit state that wrongly. All 10,000 of them were not. Um, the cream of the crop who would go in close to the king and to the king's harem with the concubines, it was just protocol that they would do that because they didn't want young men that were smart and handsome and all of these things that the Bible says. Mm -hmm. um, and so that combined with the knowledge uh, that we have just of J J Jewish history, heritage, lineage was so important. Mm -hmm. And throughout scripture, you always hear about who begat who and who begat who. And I, that was, in that day, that was everything. Um, you know, today we hang our different plaques on the wall and our different trophies, but back then it was everything. And the silence is deafening um, f f on Daniel's, who did he leave? There's our Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, same thing. So you combine the fact, huh, we never hear of any offspring, and we know that it was just typical protocol. Kings w would do that in that day, and and then even their boss, the the chief eunuch, like, oh well, that must have been part of the story. Talk about a rotten, horrible, awful, bad day. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Daniel. One of the other questions that we got was so oftentimes in the Bible we know. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego by their names that they were given, yeah. but Daniel is just Daniel. Yeah, the Hebrew <laughs> name. And that's their Babylonians, the three guys. Why is that? Right. I have no idea. I guess it's just because of all the little songs that we sing in church when we're kids. It, it was, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Maybe there's a deeper reason. I, I don't know what that reason is that we tend to call them their Babylonian names. Yeah, maybe easier than the other ones because none of them are exactly easy That's to go true. through. That's so uh, the next question was just simply, you referenced a book that you've been using sure. in this yeah, series. Book. Larry Osborne is a friend of mine out in uh, San Diego, pastors a fantastic church called uh, North Coast. And he writes this book, Thriving in Babylon. It just came out and, and it was over the summer break I read it, and which was really very much of the inspiration, and I, which I borrow liberally from uh, in this opening installment. But it's very good, and I highly recommend it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next question is really, we got a couple of questions along the same lines. And so this one is just asking that, you know, so many times we see Jesus operating from love and from humility. Sure. Uh, but there's also moments where we see him turning over tables and acting in righteous anger. And so what is the application for us as we're trying to balance those two? When do we sure. respond in love and is there a time when? Right. Well, <laughs> we Christians don't like to think about this, but when did he turn over the table, tables? Who was he inclined to get the most upset with? It was the religious people. See, I, I'm afraid we Christians, we get the most upset uh, by the secular people. Th that's not who he all, he was always uh, tr trying to draw them in, but it was the blasted Pharisees that, uh, or, and the other people who were, you know, doing the things that they were doing that he was always getting so bent out of shape. So I think we have to, to keep in mind um, probably if you've got to go into work and it's a secular 
workplace, well, even if it's a Christian workplace, but certainly if it's a secular workplace, you don't agree uh, with, you know, something that you know, I shouldn't have to do this job, I'm better than this, or you, you can't start turning over tables. We don't get that permission um, from Scripture. Again, uh, the next question is, is kind of, we had multiples uh, along this line, and the question is about Hitler. It says, should a Christian have humbly followed Hitler provided they were not required to personally commit sin? Or is there an obligation sometimes to say no to a ruler or authority? Absolutely. And in this country, we, we have the perfect opportunity to do that. We each get to vote. Mm. And if we feel so inclined and called by God, we can even run for office and try to bring about change. Mm -hmm. And so uh, absolutely, but it's the, it's the mode or the method um, that, that we're really talking about. We have to work through um, the appropriate channels. Um, now, let's, while we're talking about Hitler, which is, is it's, it's a good question. Let's remember, as wicked and horrible, terrible as Hitler was, which was like Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, both of those are probably among, probably two of the 20 most powerful people in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. So th they have a lot in common, mm -hmm. uh, and wicked, um, I, I should have added. But let's go back to where Christianity started. You had all these Roman emperors mm -hmm. and Nero and all that. I mean, Christianity has always had to swim against the current of typically the the, the, the residing power, and that's why we often try to need to remind ourselves we're a counter-cultural faith. Now, in America, we get to vote. Vote. You can run for office. Run for office. Don't forget anything we talked about. Be, be humble. Choose your battles wisely, and you know, keep hope and and all. But we can't ever expect that the government is going to do for us what God promises. Otherwise, we wouldn't need God, would we? We would just need a government. And, and I think this is where we who had lived in America back in particularly the 80s, some of us are around, but were around back then, you had the moral majority, you had Jerry Falwell, you had uh, Pat Robertson, you had Dr. Dobson, and, and wonderful men and, and who were trying to leverage all the influence that they can, could uh, upon uh, our culture. And I think some good came out of that. I think where we Christians are grasping today is now that that has all been tipped on its ear, what in the world do we do? And I think that's where we have to say, okay, let's go back and let's learn fr from, from Daniel. And let's remember, uh, kingdoms will come, kingdoms will go. Sometimes a kingdom will be favorable to the things of God. Constantine came along in the 300s AD and all of a sudden said Christianity is the state religion. Boom! You can build big, beautiful churches, the likes of which we can still tour in Europe. Okay, but, but then there's other times that Christianity is not in vogue and Christians are persecuted. And so... Um, I think we have to keep in mind, ultimately, our Savior is Jesus and Jesus alone. No government, no president, no ruler is ever going to ultimately be able to, to be what only Jesus can be for us. It's really to kind of stay on that third point that you talked about, which was just to hope in God and, right. and continue walking in that. That's sure. good. That's helpful. Uh, the last question is just simply, in these modern times, I think so many times we're looking, who do we point the blame at? Who is our enemy? Mm -hmm. Who is it that we're against sure. in these times? Who is our enemy? Sure. Well, let's remember, the enemy is the enemy, the devil, Satan. Um, we jotted down s several passages just, you know, that are, I think, particularly relevant. S Ephesians 6, 12, um, where we're reminded, look, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Um, but against the rulers and the authorities and the powers and the principalities of this dark 
world that have spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So you're looking at a person who has skin on them and you're saying you are the enemy. Well, no, you, you are a lost person that needs Jesus, mm -hmm. but you are being used by the enemy. Uh, yes, perhaps. But I think this is where we have to keep the grand, uh, you know, picture in mind and, and remember that, that we're living out this life in this kingdom uh, on earth as citizens of a different kingdom. And we re realize then, okay, there's, there's altogether different spiritual things that are going on here. And, and let's not fall for the bait of thinking that person himself or herself uh, is the enemy, which is hard, uh, especially when you have somebody who's in a position of authority. But here again, Peter gives us some good counsel um, in 1 Peter 2, 13 through 17. Submit yourselves, he said. And these were the Christians who were getting persecuted and killed, uh, you know, by the Roman authorities. Uh, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as a supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but don't use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's servants or God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers, fear God, and honor the emperor. Well, sometimes we want to read that and say, except when his name is this person, but it doesn't say that. And that's where we have to say, okay. So here we go. That's helpful. Thank you so much, Pastor Ken, for being here with us. Thank you for joining us on Postscript. We'll be back next week as we continue on in this series called Unshakable with Part 2. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.